Dorchester. The backyards, New Brunswick. Starts now. The stones and the cells are pretty incredible too. Always nice to see a fresh cadaver. <laughs> as soon as you walk in the door. <laughs> movie called Snow Falling on Cedars and he is supposed to be Ethan Hawke. Um, he's about six foot. He weighs about 125, 130 pounds. He's got bone structure in his arms and his legs and he's got all the little intricate lines on his hands. He's got an Adam's apple and he's just a little bit too lifelike so he hangs out down here. <laughs> <laughs> some old bottles that the guards used to go upstairs and hide under the floorboards in the attic. Stress relief. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it was a stressful job. There was uh, only three guards for 55 inmates. You'd definitely be not very only popular. three guards. Three guards for 55 people, yeah. Um, so on that side there, it used to be the kitchen, and then on the other side here was the visitation areas, and then upstairs where we actually reside is where the warden and his family used to live back in the day. And then after they abolished the death penalty, it was no longer deemed necessary for them to live on premise, and it was converted into offices, so the uh, nurses station, the guards bubble, the superintendents, all, all that's over on our side of the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome to go right inside of the cells. All of the artwork on the walls is original from the inmates. We have only covered up the really vulgar stuff. We've also disabled the locks in this hallway, so if you guys want to pretend to lock each other up for pictures, you're more than welcome to, pardon me, to do that. The uh, head in there, that is a casting mold from the movie The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Oh, cool. Yeah. GP. Hmm. We may have someone staying in that room. few different setups. We get single people, we get couples, we get families, we get uh, a lot of paranormal groups come through. Mm -hmm. Very interesting artwork in this cell as well. It was a little over 20 years ago in 1998, and it opened in 1875. It's the second oldest provincial jail in Canada. Uh, it's the only privately owned jail in all of Canada. And it's the only jail in Canada where you can willingly spend a night in jail cell. <laughs> all right, so I'm here with... Natasha. Natasha, Hello. I guess my first question is, what inspired the jail to become an Airbnb? Well, myself, my husband, and my daughter, we actually bought the jail five years ago. We actually live here inside of the jail. And I, we, we didn't know what we were really going to do with the building when we bought it. 
Um, and we figured, you know, we can't be the only crazy people that might want to spend a night in jail. So we said, you know, let's try, just try a and b and see what kind of our feedback is. Um, the first summer that we were here, we were almost sold out like every day. Amazing. And so five years later, we're at 13, almost 14 times super host on Airbnb. We're one of the top attractions in Eastern Canada. Um, we've been really fortunate. We've housed people from all over the world here with us. And we, um, we love it because not only is this our home, we get to open it up and share the experience with other people too. And that's really rewarding for us in itself, just getting to have other people through for the experience of something we really enjoy. So have you attracted some high profile people here? We, we have had some, some people here. Um, we're not allowed to disclose names, um, but we've had, we've had a couple of television shows filmed here in the jail, um, oh, wow. a couple of paranormal television shows filmed here inside of nice. the jail. Um, there's definitely stuff here. Um, not, uh, a lot of people think because of the nature of the building, it has to be really mean demonic stuff and it's not, um, We've lived here for five years and we experience stuff almost on a daily basis, but nothing's ever made us feel like we're not wanted or welcome here or we're in any kind of danger. Um, so it's just a, a part of living in a 150-year-old jail. Very <laughs> Are you from New Brunswick? We're not. No, You're we not. actually moved here from Ontario. Oh, wow. Okay. And what was that move for you? Was it the best move? The best move ever. Yeah, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Now we we lived in the city, um, so we're happy to be out here where it's a little bit quiet. It's uh, very scenic and beautiful, and yeah. I, I don't miss the concrete jungle. <laughs> it's, uh, I find New Brunswick is like a living museum. There's so much history that's still evident. Yeah, it's very historically rich. Here. And, Even uh, here in Dorchester, like um, the building, it's the second oldest provincial jail in Canada. The, uh, one of the founding fathers of Confederation. His home is just kitty corner up the hill from the jail here. Uh, we have the Bell Inn, which is one of the oldest stone buildings in all of New Brunswick. It's, um, it's very, very historically rich here, and we like to preserve that. So you that's definitely, what we do here. Yeah, you definitely got the proper idea to preserve it. Uh, amazing facility. And Thank you. I'm excited to show you guys. The I'm rest. glad. I'm definitely glad you guys came here and did this because this is this is amazing. It's something different. It is, yeah. And we and like I said, we love to get to open up our home and not just be selfish and keep it for ourselves. And we, you know, we enjoy the smiles and the spooks that people get when they're here. <laughs> and always a new face. <laughs> and always a new face. Yes. Yes. And just like and the forensics analysis sign just behind your head there. Um, those are two props from the Saw movie, Saw Four. Uh, we also have one of the gurneys that was used in Saw 5. Oh, I look so fun. You're my favorite. <laughs> and then this here, this is a pretty cool piece of history. Um, so this is actually an underground railroad bench that was used during the 1850s to free the slaves. They would put two or three people inside of the bench there and bring them up. And for me, the most fascinating thing about this bench is that when it's flipped on its back you can actually see it's made out of an old bible crate that come from jerusalem oh wow yeah <clears throat> it's one of those stairs you really don't want to carry furniture up uh, <gasps> very often grocery day is not my favorite bars in the window oh wow oh, so we just live right in here, so for any reason you guys need anything, don't hesitate to come and knock on the door. Here is your official inmate ID tag. And tomorrow before you guys leave, you'll uh, both get an official inmate release form as well. <laughs> cool. And we get a, uh, quite a few YouTubers and stuff come through. But... Cool. OJ Simpson's clothing.
So they actually fit. So how did you guys get your hands on some of the saw? Um, um, so where we, so we, um, my husband used to work for the city of Toronto and where he was, it was almost like in the film district itself. So he used to go to a lot of prop sales before we even moved here. And that's where he acquired a lot of things from. Mm -hmm. Tall solder in there. Those are real human skulls. The uh, big, big guy there, he's about 300, 350 years old. The smaller one there, that's a full grown adult female. She's about 100 to 150 years old. Uh, we've got a real shrunken head in there. We have a walking stick from Germany. Uh, we got a cool walking dead lamp. <laughs> So behind there, behind there now is our kitchen, but that used to be the guards' bubble. So they, that's why the speaker and the tray is in the glass there. So they would have one guard sit here and watch the 30 inmates that used to be in this here. So this was one giant jail cell that used to house up to 30 men. And this is where all the non-violent petty offenders were housed for just relatively short periods of time. Two toilets and a urinal for 30 men. Your guys' room for the evening. Library. Mm. That there used to be the library. Um, so at the end of this hallway is where death row is located. Um, but this first room here is your guys' room. There's a couple little uh, snack things and water there for you guys. So this room here used to be attached to the room beside it, and this is where the female inmates were housed. Um, so they'd have about four to eight women here at a time, mostly thieves, prostitutes, bootleggers. They were housed here for just relatively short periods of time. That's why there's bars in there. As much as I'd love to outfit the cells with outlets, I don't have a million dollars to get through the walls to put the electricity through. How's the TV running? Pardon? How's the TV running? Well, this up here is different. It's got its own electricity, but downstairs, like in the actual cells themselves, yeah, there's no way we're getting through that foot wall. No. <laughs> foot thick wall. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all surplus items from the military surplus store. Uh, my husband bought a very good portion of the contents out of the building when she sold it last year. Is there any ghillie suits? Uh, you have to let me know what that is. It's like one of those... Uh, this metal door here doesn't actually lock, so if you guys would like to pretend to be locked up in death row, by all means, go right ahead. <laughs> there used to be a nurse's station here. The amount of women that have seen this table have freaked right out because of what it is. I have a buddy that has another one for sale. Oh, uh, yeah? It's over mm -hmm. With stirrups and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's like... 40, 50, 60 year old women, not young girls either. What's that for? Are you serious? So I will let you know as you go around the corner there, there is a life size photo, so don't be startled, okay? Somebody getting their last rights? The, this is one of the brothers that was hanged, correct? That's right. Yes, yeah, so that there is the eldest Bannister brother saying his last goodbyes to his mom. And this picture is actually taken right outside of the cell. Here you can see the hinge on the door just behind his head here. Um, so he's here with mom saying goodbye. Uh, the gentleman behind the mother there, that is actually the executioner. Um, so he's just keeping a very close eye to make sure she's not trying to pull any funny stuff. Um, I'll just pop this door open here just to let a little bit more light in for your pictures because I know those are super dark.
<laughs> Brooklyn. SV1, safety vehicle number one. Riding in a brick one. There's the driver. 75. 1975, yeah? This is car number 2157. 2157. And if you uh, look on the internet at the movie Hobo with the shotgun, this is the very car that was in the movie. Uh, it's Ricky Fincino Park Boys was in the scene with this car. Yes, sir. Ivan and Slick were the two guys driving the car in the movie. You were, uh, and you have a connection to the movie industry. Yep. Yeah. Well, Finding by a lot of molds that you possess. Exactly. Yeah. Just buying and selling the props. And back in Toronto, I used to rent a lot of stuff out or sell it to the movies production studios. They didn't buy a lot of stuff back too. Yes, sir. I've seen a lot of interesting props at the jail. So. Yeah. One time, have you ever seen the uh, TV show Degrassi? Yep. Season 10, they had a hearse. Morty, the hearse. I had that hearse after it wrapped up season 10. Now, was this uh, the next generation? The, uh, or is this the OG? This is the next generation okay. one. Or I don't even think it's called next generation. It was the third one, I think. It's like the CTV years, the Bell Media years. It's not the old, it's not the old school no. one. No, I like not that junior one. high and yeah. Kit Hood was the producer of the original series. I remember that name. I watched it all the time. It was filmed down around Etobicoke and Toronto. Yeah. You're Canadian. Absolutely. Layers of hemlock that was actually put in in the 40s from the penitentiary people, the inmates, who came up here and did this work. So once you have, we're going to the back over death row, which I'm explaining to you about the little secret missing room. Again, watch your head, watch your steps. Death row right there. This would be the uh, banister cell right here that goes to the to the fire separation wall. The entrance would be right there, and this would be the other jail cell beside it. Yeah, right here. And this would be the laundry room we were talking about. And then I was explaining how at the back of the laundry room, there's that mysterious cell. That's why there's bars on it. These bars are from the 1831 jail that was built to burn down, that they repurposed onto the jail cells here. They took them off because people are actually cutting through these. These are very soft. They're from England. And uh, so they put them all up here, and it's all throughout the whole roof, and they just didn't put the, the, the hemlock on top of here. But I love these bars. Just as fun getting out as it is getting in. There we are. I was looking for the flux capacitor, but it's not a DeLorean. <laughs> you know?